se u Londonu odlučuje o mnogim stvarima. Odlučuje se o stvarima koje su veoma bitne što se tiče strategije u svetu, a poučeni iskustvom ovde se odlučuje o mnogo čemu što se događa na Balkanu i o mnogo čemu što se događa kod nas. To je kraljičina garda, oni ovde stanuju i na neki način čuvaju kraljicu, ali to je sada samo za turiste. I upravo preko puta garde nalazi se jedna zgrada koja ne ima broj, To je institut, da kažemo, za neke strateške studije gde su objedinjene mnoge službe koje se bave procenama, obaveštajnim radom. Danas sam dobila intervju sa gospodinom Jonathanom Ajlom, kome se uvek vraćam onda kada su neke stvari nejasne. To je stručnjak koliko za Balkan, za svet, toliko i za ono što se događa kod nas. Uvijek je postojala velika nedoumica na zapadu o tome kako i šta će istok učiniti. Dva načina razmišljenja dovela su do nastajanja specifičnih instituta kao i stručnjaka koji bi na zapadu tumačili poteze državnika iz istočnih zemalja i predviđali razvoj situacije. O tome svedoče institucije pod nazivima Institut za strateška ispitivanja, za balkanske studije, za istočnu Evropu, a ima ih po Berlinu, Njujorku, Vašingtonu, Parizu i Londonu. Jugoslovenski konflikt na površinu je izbacio u javnost ljude koji su godinama bez te iste javnosti tumačili dokumente, informacije, učili savjesno ruski, poljski, češki, srpski, ne bili što uspešnije protumačili ponašanja i odluke jednog drugačijeg sleda misli koji se i naziva istočno-evropski sindrom. Od kada je nastala ova naša muka, stručnjaci za istočnu Evropu i Balkan postali su bliži centrima moći. Britanci i Amerikanci razmenjuju stručnjake, konsultuju poznavaoci jugoslovenskih prilika, sve u cilju sagledavanja specifičnosti ovog rata oko nas. Jedan od takvih ljudi je Jonathan Isle, koji u Kraljevskom institutu za odbranu Velike Britanije izučava naše prostore i savjetuje. Studija o internacionalnih relacijama je uvijekljeno, uvijekljeno, uvijekljeno o uvijekljeno o strategiju balance of power within a particular country, but it also involves a study of the personality of the leaders leading those countries. Now, looking at the Yugoslavia conflict, I was, of course, very much aware of the personalities involved. We were always very much aware of the fact that personalities matter sometimes much more than ideology and much more than strategic considerations in countries like the Balkans. I looked very carefully at the behavior of Slobodan Milosevic, the Serbian president, over a number of years, starting from his rise to power in 1987 and ending with the civil war in Yugoslavia. I was always struck by two things. First was his determination never to be cornered, never to be pinned down, to one set of priorities. He would be very happy to offer quite a few people quite a few things. He was a master of ambiguities and he was always very short with a short answer. At the same time, I was always struck by his ability at manipulation, but especially his feeling that he could somehow manipulate the national feelings of his people. He understood much earlier than the other communist leaders in other East European countries that the only way a high-ranking communist official can survive is by playing on the nationalist card. Ceausescu and all the other leaders in Eastern Europe fell without being able to change. Slobodan Milosevic was able to do that change. All the time, not today, not a year ago, more than that, we were very clear, policy of Serbia was very clear in uh, 
constatation and approach that we don't have territorial pretension. That is on the record in the last two years before all hostilities and nobody, if he's honest, can say that we were making greater Serbia or some other things. I'm happy now that uh, we started to, how to say, pull together efforts to stop all those bloody events and that, that uh, absolutely uh, bad and uh, not justful war. But you know why people think that you wanted a greater Serbia. What happened over these last months, terrible things happened over these past months. Pieces of Bosnia, which had perhaps dominant Serbian population, were taken, and anybody who wasn't a Serb was under pressure to leave. Some were deported, some were tortured. That looks like territorial acquisition and ambition. Well, if anybody is pressed to leave, that is that ethnic cleansing. I consider that, and we consider that in Serbia, only as a criminal act. But why didn't you stop it? Then? And uh, we officially stated, uh, with all our eagerness, that that don't have to happen at all, and that all which are doing so, who are doing so, have to be subject of criminal pr prosecution. But there is civil war. Nobody understand what happened there in civil war. No innocent side. But you knew and some... No, no winners in civil war, only victims. But you knew some of the people who were doing it. I mean, you knew some of the warlords who were authorizing it. Uh, those people I know that is Serbian leadership of Bosnia and Herzegovina. They said to me very categorically, they are against that. And s only crazy people can think that that kind of ethnic clamsing uh, can be something good. That is, uh, that, that, is, that is crime which cannot be accepted and which cannot be excused for any side. But you know what people feel, and that is that you can pull the strings with the Serbs in Bosnia, the Bosnian Serbs, that you have relationships. Could you imagine that uh, one person can be so powerful to pull strings in a, in a republic in which uh, even is not elected? But you are a common people. You are brothers with the Serbs in Bosnia. It's understandable you will have relationships with them and that you can use those relationships to bring influence. I was using all my influence to stop that war. Uh, I, I remind you, maybe you were not informed, we were officially, uh, through the official statement of government of Serbia, condemned uh, on a, on, on, a, on, on a most, uh, 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 how to say, powerful way, all that bombardment of Sarajevo, for example, uh, uh, insisting that uh, those which are doing so have to be uh, subject of criminal prosecution and so on. But in a civil war, when you don't have formula for solution, and because of that, uh, I think that some other sites were avoiding conference and continuation. Well, how and good we a cannot, formula do we now have? I think it is good formula. And, and will uh, we and see you withdrawing saying, from places that you occupy that are not yours? We are not occupying nothing. Serbia is not occupying nothing. Or uh, will we and see Serbs, the camps close? Will we Serbs, see the camps close? Uh, Serbs in Bosnia categorically said that they are ready to give part of territory to Muslims and to uh, liquidate all those prisons for, for uh, uh, war prisoners they have. I was astonished when I, when I heard uh, information that there are, there are detention camps. I was asking them, what is that? Is it possible? I have got information from them. Only uh, prisons for prisoners of war. There is war. I cannot say there is nothing, absolutely, 
I cannot, how to say, uh, I cannot be sure. Uh, even I cannot be sure that those which are explaining that to me are completely informed. But whenever that kind of activity exists, that is crime. But let them put that under control of International Red Cross. What can be better? And uh, uh, what can be better? Better is only complete liquidation of that camp and, and, uh, and make all that people free. And if local Serbian warlords refuse to abide by these agreements here in London, I will you move against them? I hope that uh, their, uh, their leadership will arrest them and put them in a jail. But you know their that. leadership. His leadership is Mr. Karadzic, Koljevic and the others which were present on a London conference and which signed that they will do that. And I believe that they have to stick to their promises. We don't have to, 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 uh, to accept any excuse for any, how to say, missing in that. Uh, having in mind that those are very, very important humanitarian issues. And we don't, we, we don't want to support any kind of that, of that behavior. I have watched the Serbian leader on a number of times when he appeared in The Hague or in Brussels trying to negotiate with the European community or with the people dealing with the peace conference on Yugoslavia. And I was always struck by a great paradox. On the one hand, this was a man who would accept no advice from anyone. Nobody dared suggest to him what the real situation in the world was. At the same time, this was a very vulnerable person on his individual personal life. And yet at the same time, with an enormous determination, unfortunately a determination that ended in destruction. I think that Milosevic's biggest problem was to assume that somehow Yugoslavia was the center of Europe and that somehow all that the West European leaders could do is to try to make plots and divide Yugoslavia in spheres of influence. The reality is that June 1991, nobody wanted the Yugoslav civil war, nobody wanted to see the country's disintegration, nobody wanted to see Serbia harmed. But by pushing towards the military confrontation, by assuming that countries like Germany were already creating spheres of influence in Yugoslavia. Paradoxically, Milosevic ended up with exactly the worst possible scenario. He has pushed the European community to the brink of making a decision about Yugoslavia. And he has created a constellation of small states which can only fall within different spheres of influence. What kind of position do you think we will see in what was Yugoslavia? What is Serbia going to be? Well, uh, I want to say to you, uh, I, uh, I, I had a suggestion to conference, and I was glad uh, because of the fact that uh, your Prime Minister, Chairman of the conference, Mr. Major, was positive uh, about that suggestion. I suggested that all sides in conflict, he have to take the commitment to accept uh, observer of UN, officers of UN in every single military unit. If they do so, we can have that war, that bloody war, uh, uh, finished in a couple of weeks, just to, for implementation of that. And I'm sure that only those which don't like to see the truth will oppose realization of that plan. If officers of UN are in every single military unit, they will see origin of those units and they will see if they are breaking ceasefire agreement. They will see that there are 
50,000 of Croat regular troops and no one from Serbia. We were blamed for aggression. Why anybody can catch one soldier from Serbia and put on TV and say, that is, those liars from Belgrade are saying to us that there are not uh, Serbian, uh, Serbian soldiers. There is Serbian soldier. This uh, whole procedure has been set out by Boutros Boutros Ghali. And the last thing he said was that at the same time there will be a tribunal that will examine war crimes. Do you believe in any sense that in the end you may have had some responsibility for no, what happened? No, not at all. I'm supporting that idea for tribunal. Let them organize that tribunal. There will be maybe a lot of those which were causing that bloody war. I'm sure I'm not among them. I'm convinced that Milosevic genuinely believed that what he was doing was for the good of Serbia and his people. I have no doubts at all that despite the changes in the names of the party, despite the claims that he did not believe anymore in communism, he certainly believed in a corporatist, collectivist idea in an attempt to keep Serbia under tight control. And like very many single-minded people, he believed that this could be achieved by force. Probably in his mind, he thinks he was going to be another Pasic. The reality probably will be that he will be remembered by history as one of Yugoslavia's and Serbia's greatest disasters. Like many people with a sense of mission, their private life was rather Spartan. According to all the indications, Milosevic himself was not terribly interested in financial benefits. He was not terribly interested in a lavish life. The people around him were the ones that tried to benefit from anything that they could get their hands on, but not the leader himself. He also seems to be devoted to his wife. And that again is the usual characteristic of a leader that genuinely believes in a mission. However, as on many of these occasions, most of his thoughts he kept to himself, and none of his assistants were able to tell him what the reality of life was. And so, very often, I have seen him arrive at peace conferences, open a file and discuss and try to suggest to us a whole new bright future for Yugoslavia, very often talking about irrelevant issues which had no particular consideration as far as the West was concerned. The ultimate example for me was, of course, his speech on the night when the Holy Synod of the Serbian Church attacked him. Instead of answering the attack, Instead of trying to define what he means by the Serbian nation or whether the suffering is actually worth the price. Instead of that, he again talked about the great future of high-speed trains in Serbia, about a high-tech Serbian society. Again, this obsession with the manipulation, the social engineering, the technological transformation of society, when the reality for most people was a much simpler one of trying to find food and work from day to day. Four days after the UN imposed sanctions, which must have shocked Slobodan Milosevic with their severity, the Serbian leader appeared calm this afternoon in the presidential palace in central Belgrade. Could he now think of a way out, a compromise which would lead to the lifting of sanctions? First thing, what I want to say, uh, we want to cooperate uh, with the UN. We don't think that we have to be confronted with the UN. We are part of a world organization 
And I think that uh, only on the basis of understanding what really happens here, we can reach uh, some what we can uh, consider justful solution to our country. Mr. President, how do you answer the accusation that in the statements that you yourself have made over the past four years, you've created an expectation amongst the Serbian population in Bosnia and Croatia that you'd support them in uh, breaking away from their own republics? No, that, is, that was not... Uh, uh, you can check very, uh, very uh, strictly uh, what was our policy. Uh, we uh, had a policy uh, uh, to... Uh, 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 to have a continuation of Yugoslavia, to preserve Yugoslavia as a country which existed. And uh, uh, Yugoslavia, we were, uh, uh, we were blamed that we want to create greater Serbia. That was not in any time our policy. And we were very clear explaining that Serbia doesn't have any territorial pretension. What effect do you expect the sanctions to have on Serbia? Uh, sanctions will have a, a very bad effect in terms of economy. Uh, we, are, we are not an island. We are cooperating. Uh, our environment is world market. Uh, but uh, uh, I hope that uh, uh, sanctions uh, will be lifted after uh, clarification of a situation in Yugoslavia, after uh, truth come on a scene now on a scene, on a political scene, are, are interest and power, not truth and justice. How concerned are you about the possibility of foreign military intervention here? And what steps are you taking against it? I really wonder how anybody can uh, start with any military intervention against country in which it exists peace on every square centimeter and which is not having any armed personnel anywhere out of that country. Uh, we are not phantoms. Uh, we don't have an army which can have secret actions. We cannot hide uh, that uh, in front of our citizen. Uh, if we uh, had any soldier out, uh, out of Yugoslavia, we could have protests of our citizens, of parents and relatives, and, and uh, it is very clear to all our, uh, all our people, all our, all our citizens in Serbia, that we really do not have it. And how anybody can find a basis for any intervention uh, against us for, uh, for not having any, any uh, military action to, to anybody. Or do you think it's a possibility? Army. Do you think it's a possibility? Well, uh, that can be absolutely uh, unjustful and kind of aggression to our country. If uh, that happened, I don't think that uh, international community can support something like that. If the best path to peace now seems to be your own departure from office, your own resignation, would you take that path? Oh, absolutely. If it is a, uh, if it is a, a prize for lifting on sanctions or just for solution, that is the cheapest uh, way for that. It is not problem at all. And I'll say to you who can be the happiest for that, my family, my children and my wife, in that case. It's not a problem. A problem is absolutely uh, different. Problem is uh, a continuation of existence of our country and uh, uh, right of our people to put in order on their own will how they are going to live uh, together, not to be dictated uh, from outside. It must concern you, though, that you are not trusted by the world community. People say that you are not believed. Does that concern you? This, this uh, is the attitude from the outside. Absolutely, absolutely. But just because of that, I'm saying, don't trust me. If you don't trust, don't trust me. Please send people in check. Trust your own eyes. Not to me. Mr. President, thank you very much. You're welcome. The effects of the Milosevic rule will take years to heal in Serbia. First, the question of the legitimacy not only of a government, but of the republic as well. Milosevic played with every side of the government in 
Serbia and Yugoslavia. The main question of whether Serbia should return to being a monarchy will have to be answered one day. The question of what is the place of the church within that society. The question of what are the parliamentary institutions for. The role of the media, the education of the young. Almost everything will have to be recreated. Milosevic is just one passing phase. Many other figures have disappeared in other East European countries and I have no doubt whatsoever that Serbia will reconstruct itself. All that has happened in the interval of the last five years is that the process of change which has begun in the past has been delayed. It cannot be stopped. I'm not going to say it. Dr. Al, you are in fact occupied with the long-range strategy. And after all this uh, conversation I had with you all this time, I came to the point that the borders are tremendously important for a future development of the country. And of course, this airport of Sarajevo, which is a strategic point. Clearly, the most important thing for a lot of uh, the Serbians to realize is that the chance of getting the entire Serbian nation under one border is not feasible. It will not happen. I think that some division in Bosnia will have to take place and some negotiations about special rights for the Serbs in other republics will have to take place. But that the government in Belgrade should not try to push too much on the question of changing the borders at the moment because we are assuming now a momentum within Europe where at one stage the potential use of military force for intervention in Yugoslavia may not be avoided. I'm going to ask you, do you think I'm safe going home? I think you are. I think you are safe as all Serbs are. You are safe for the moment, and you're certainly safe from any military intervention from the West, which I doubt very much whether it would hit the population of Serbia. You are not safe, however, from the small designs, perhaps, of some of Serbia's leaders. Anywhere you go, anywhere you go.